This video is all about LFOs and envelopes. So as I wrote in the intro, I'm going to show you how I made all of those sounds and explain what was going on. When I was kind of making up what I was going to do in the intro, I set out to use some of the concepts that I've touched on in previous videos and make use of the LFOs in commonly used ways and some more creative ways. So I think showing you how I did that will help explain the LFO section. I'm also going to set up the oscilloscope to show you what's happening. By the end of this video, you should have a good idea of how control voltages work, how LFOs and envelopes work, and some options to use specifically on the Mother 32. So let's get started by picking apart the intro sounds that I use. So I've mentioned the VCA mode before. At the beginning of the intro section, you can see that I had this set to on. That's because I wanted the sound to pass through the amp, regardless of whether or not I was pressing a key. The cutoff still takes effect, and you'll see me switch this to off as soon as I start playing the keys. That will re-engage the envelope so I can play individual notes. So if you remember from the oscillator video, I showed you that this mix knob controls the amount of sound that's coming from the sound waves and the amount of noise coming from the white noise generator. For the sounds at the very beginning, I was using all noise. So let's turn this mix up. So right now, I'm modulating this cutoff using the VCF modulation amount. I have it set to an LFO, which is a triangle LFO, and a moderate amount. This is a great way to make nice sound effects. This is actually how sound effects are made for things like those sound machines you put in babies' rooms. If we turn the resonance down, it sounds a little bit more like beach or waves. And as we turn the resonance up, it starts to sound more like wind. Now many modules have things like random voltage to make this a little bit more, to make this a little bit less rhythmic. Although waves have a rhythm, the rhythm, although waves have a rhythm, the rhythm isn't always consistent, and that's partly why it's sometimes nice to add some randomness. But we don't have that option immediately available on the mother. You can, however, modulate the actual rate of the LFO using the patch bay, and I'll get into that later. For now, let's get back to our example. So after I introduced these nature noises, I started bringing in some tones from the oscillator. I was using a pulse wave. So I'm using the same LFO to modulate pulse width. And as I lowered the cutoff, I lowered the amount that I was modulating the cutoff and slowly started raising the rate of the, of the um, LFO. At the same time, I was increasing the cutoff. And I pushed it all the way into audio rate. I'm going to turn the envelope back on so that I can talk and not have it be too annoying and distracting. So here we have the LFO going at audio rate, modulating the pulse width and the VCO amount. And what I'm doing is tuning by ear how much the rate locks in with the actual note. And you'll hear that right now it's locked in at C, but as if I go, but if I go up to a different note, it's a little bit out of tune. So what I was doing as I was playing was trying to tune it quickly, but if, but if I couldn't get it, I would just kind of do a sweep to give that added effect. I 
Also, if we turn up the modulation amount, if you remember from the oscillator video, it goes up so high that the pulse width will cancel itself out. Now you can't really hear it when it's going this fast, but you can if you slow it down and it has that cool sort of ratcheting effect. Pretty cool stuff. So those are some fun things you can do with the LFOs. But let's have a look through the oscilloscope and see what they look like. So in the patch bay, you have access to both of the LFO waves. And you can use them even while this is set to whatever. So if this is set to a triangle, you can still access the pulse wave. You just have to do it through the patch bay. For now, let's plug into the triangle LFO. So this is what it looks like. And if you notice, each of those squares is two volts, and this indicator in the middle is zero volts. So this LFO is moving about five volts in both directions, negative five volts all the way up to positive five volts. And as we increase the rate, it goes faster. So this is control voltage. And what happens when you apply it to a signal is it basically makes the knobs move for you. So that way you don't have to do anything. So if we were to take this same LFO signal and put it into the cutoff, this is what it would sound like. And notice it's relative to where the cutoff position is. So if you put it at exactly 12 o'clock, it'll be right in the middle. And that would have the same effect as if I were to unplug this, hold down the note. And just do it by hand. That's the basic premise of control voltages. Is it turns things for you. It makes things move for you. So the signal coming out of here matches the signal of the LFO. The only difference is that this LFO is internally wired to go through these two attenuators. And th what these attenuators do is basically make those peaks and valleys smaller. So rather than going up five volts and down five volts, you could set it to go up one volt and down one volt. Now I don't have a way that I can patch after the attenuator into my oscilloscope, but I can use the VC mixer to demonstrate what it would look like. So now I think is a good time to talk about this. The VC mix stands for voltage controlled mixer, and it does exactly what its name says. It mixes control voltage. I'm gonna hit on this in multiple videos because it's such a great utility. But now let me give you a quick introduction. So these four patches in the patch bay are directly connected to this knob. You can plug two signals in, one at mix one and one at mix two here and here. The mix of those two signals will come out here at VC mix. This third control is that you can modulate this. So if I were to plug an LFO in here, it would be essentially the same thing as turning this knob up and down. Now with nothing plugged in, you can use this to add voltage. If it's turned all the way down, it adds zero voltage. If it's turned up, it goes all the way up to five volts. Let's check that out in the oscilloscope. So I'm gonna come out of my voltage controlled mix and you can see that when I turn it down, it goes down to the indicator level, which is zero. And as I turn it up, it rises all the way to five. So this is useful in all kinds of different ways. But for right now, let's just patch the LFO triangle into number two of the voltage controlled mix. So what happens with this all the way clockwise, we see our LFO exactly as it was before with nothing patched. But if we turn this down, we can attenuate it. Notice now that you have the same LFO, but it's just a little bit smaller. And we can get even smaller. 
have it be very subtle. So that's essentially what this knob is doing. If you turn this up all the way, it would be just like having your LFO going at full blast. If you turn it down just a small amount, it would be just like the voltage controlled mix being a small amount. Now I don't think that it quite matches up perfect. I'm not exactly sure the amount of attenuation here, but I just wanted to use this as an example, number one, to show you what the VC mix did, but also to give you an idea of what attenuation was. That it basically just makes the peaks and valleys of your LFO not quite so dramatic. Now I know you might be thinking, I would never attenuate through here because I can do it here. There might be some reasons you would. For instance, like what if you wanted this to attenuate the amount of envelope? Normally you would have to choose and decide, is this switched up or down? But now we can send this LFO to the cutoff and then still use this to modulate our envelope. Just something to keep in mind. Okay, that was a big tangent. I'm gonna try and get focused again. So now you have a clear idea of how LFOs work and some ways you can use the patch bay to take advantage of them. Just keep in mind that you can use these LFOs to patch and modulate all kinds of different things. Just with the internal wiring alone, the LFOs can modulate the frequency, the pulse width, the cutoff, and then you can patch into other things, resonance, the mix between noise and sound waves, the amount of attenuation, the rate of the LFO, you can really get creative with this stuff. So now let's look at the envelopes. Envelopes are just another form of control voltage. They're very similar to LFOs in that they can automate parameters, modulate things, make knobs turn. The main difference is that an LFO has cycles that repeats or con it's constantly moving and envelopes react to a trigger or a gate. Let's take a look at the envelope through the oscilloscope. So I'm plugged into EG, which is envelope generator. I'm gonna turn my modulation down. Every time I push the button, you can see that it makes a little spike. That's an envelope. Notice how the control voltage is flat, except for when I push a key. After I push a key, it goes through different phases. It goes up, it goes down, two phases. The up phase is the attack associated with this knob, and the down phase is the decay associated with this knob. So I can slow the attack, and I can speed up the decay, basically to make the envelope look however I want it to. So there's different types of envelopes. The most common are attack decay, like this one, or there's ADSR envelopes, which have two additional stages, sustain and release. The mother has a switchable sustain phase right here. This turns our envelope into an attack sustain decay envelope. The sustain phase is simply the note played would be held until it's released, and then the decay stage would kick in. Notice it's holding while I'm holding the note, and then as soon as I let go, the decay stage comes in. This is a very useful setting if you want to play with a keyboard in a traditional way, or if you're programming sequences with a variety of gate lengths and you want each of those to ring out and sound different. I'll show you how to do that when we get to the sequencer videos. So many synths have two envelopes, one that attaches to the filter and another that attaches to the amp. The matriarch is a good example of that. Now you can set up the mother with additional envelopes using external gear and your rack modules. I'll get into that later also. But without using external modular gear, we have just one envelope that modulates both. So it can be a little bit tricky to hear. What we do have, however, is a way to bypass the filter on the amp. So when I push this up, when I push this up and then press a key, we'll, we'll only hear how the envelope affects the filter. So right now, this is set to on, and we're not hearing any sound. And the reason is because the cutoff is all the way down. If I raise that cutoff, we start to hear a sound. 
Now let's listen to how the envelope impacts the cutoff. I'm going to turn the amount all the way up. Now the amp is just steady, it's not being affected at all. But every time I push this, it's basically the same thing as turning the knob. Now let's turn this all the way down and press it so that the fill so that the envelope is only impacting the amp and not the cutoff at all. Can you hear the difference? There's more of a wah effect, and if I turn up the resonance, it really impacts it. As opposed to... So one other thing I should note is this polarity switch. This can actually flip the envelope over. Let's set it to negative. Now this is one I can't reproduce on the oscilloscope without using external gear because the, what comes out of here is positive. But we can use our ears to hear it. So I'm going to disengage the amp again so that it only modulates the cutoff. And then we're going to open up the cutoff and see how it impacts the sound. So notice, when this is set to negative, it basically takes a higher cutoff value and goes down and then back up again. And that's because the voltage is moving down instead of up. So there's lots of creative uses for reversing the polarity. It's immediately noticeable with envelopes because it goes down as opposed to up. It's not as immediately apparent with LFOs. The sound is the same. It's hard when you're looking at the light, or at least I find it hard. And the reason that's not as immediately apparent is, is because if you flip a triangle wave upside down, it still kind of looks the same. However, there are reasons you might want to flip the polarity. For instance, if the timing matters, or if you wanted to patch an LFO from the patch bay, and you wanted two LFOs moving in opposite directions, as opposed to just in unison. So there's all kinds of creative uses for it. So that's how envelopes work. We hit a lot of topics in this video. We revisited the mix control, pulse width modulation, cutoff modulation, we introduce patching through the VC mix, and routing of the LFO waves using the patch bay as well as its internal routing. We discuss the polarity controls and the amp modes. So I have to say, I'm super excited about the next video. Producing random sequences is a huge interest of mine, and there's some great utilities to do it with the mother. So we'll take a look at those next. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.